Welcome everyone into Dynasty Mode, the unofficial EA Sports college football game podcast. My name B, Archie Shea, the offensive coordinator of your Idaho Vandals. Go Kippy Domers. Uh, fresh off a heartbreaking loss to uh, Clemson, uh, sadly. I don't know if you saw this. By the way, Matt, that on the other side of the screen, if you're watching on the YouTube, is Dimitri Ravanos. Dimitri, I don't know if you saw, but I was beating... Uh, by the way, you're gonna hear my son. Uh, mm-hmm. He is no, here that's, recording in the background. That's uh, your is, PA. You, that, that is right, <laughs> right, buddy. Um, I was leading Clemson, and all I had to do was take a knee, but I got a little fancy and thought oh, I'd go with Arky. a one quick pass. It's Arky. okay. I decided to tuck it and run. I fumbled, returned for a touchdown, yep. and lost the game. And that is how you get fired. Honestly, not everybody can be Sunny Dykes getting that backdoor cover on the uh, <laughs> <laughs> on the running up the score play. <laughs> that is absolutely true. So, uh, you know, we're going to fight back. Uh, we got Penn State coming up. That's going to be a tough okay. one. That's my okay. son kicking the Conference game, game, I assume. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's completely right. Uh, Dimitri, first of all, I just want to say it's uh, it's good to see you, man. Thank uh, you. I know you've gone through a long week. So I, I want to say that, you know, a part of that, that's my son. That's yeah. my little hello to the GA. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if we're going to bring him up. We don't really like to mm-hmm. display our, my child uh, along all this. But, you know, he is crazy. Sure. Um, but I, I did want to say that uh, I did take a time to talk about uh, the situation uh, with my father at the beginning of the podcast last week and how that sort of inhibited uh, some of the la- things over the last couple of weeks as I fight my son for the uh, headphone cord. He's like <laughs> a cat, although he doesn't eat it. He just grabs it every time yeah. it's going. Um, and, of course, I gave an update on you, but you'd already given an update publicly um, as far as what had happened to you last week. So... I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, I saw all the comments on the YouTube page. Uh, I didn't want to go through each and every one of them and say thank you for this and that, but it does mean a lot to us, a uh, lot to me especially. Um, Dimitri, not so much. No. Uh, it, it I did prefer mean you a people lot. leave me alone. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I, I echo everything Arky said. I saw all your comments, both on YouTube, the people that sent me messages on Twitter. Um, I appreciate it, man. I mean, and I appreciate everybody supporting Arky as well. I I don't even think I knew the extent of everything that you and your dad have been going through. And and I think I knew more than most people, but I certainly didn't know uh, the extent of it. So uh, thank you to everybody for the grace of letting us kind of get through the shit in our lives uh, right now. And just from a personal standpoint, you'll notice I have something of a beard going because I'm not allowed to shave for six weeks, which is probably the worst part of all of this. Uh, Like seriously, if you bike skateboard, whatever, for God's sakes, wear a helmet. I I mean, there is no doubt in my mind. It saved my life. You know, we, uh, I, I, I concur with that. And I haven't ridden a bike in a while. I actually just stole a bike off a garbage Good. pile from Good. a neighbor next door the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's fine. I don't know why. I think they were moving out. And I'm like, I'll just grab this bad boy, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'll make, if I'll nothing else, you hang on to it until you're dead. It. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> it's going to have to grow a couple of long legs to get well, that That's what I'm saying. Like, before. you just stow it in the back and it's like it's on layaway. That's true. Like, it, it, there will be nothing new in the next 12 years or so yeah. for him to be able to ride. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm with you. Like, I, I'm just, I'm happy to see you and to see that you're doing better. I did not know if we were going to be able to do this podcast this week. Um, there were people telling us to take our time and I do sure. appreciate that. Um, you know, you know, but we're all what? people too, but like, uh, we're like Dimitri Tim Tebow is... in 09. We, we know the opportunities here are limited and, and certainly we're listening to the doctors, but, um, you know, when, uh, given the opportunity, we're going to get in the game. And, and I, because. I mean, I can't, I can't top that. Yep. I can't top that. Um, are you hearing that electronic arts? We're in the game. Yeah, we're in the game. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, very, very cool of everyone to say that they're nice things. And I think it's very cool of Dimitri to be able to come on this, uh, this podcast oh, uh, high as a kite right now. It's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I'm not quite at kite level anymore, but uh, guys, believe the hype on OxyContin. It's fantastic. Yeah, well, you were anti-fentanyl. You did not like the fentanyl stuff. No, fentanyl made me uh, feel all kinds of gross. But uh, OxyContin, uh, don't don't think I'm not trying to save a few pills for later to flip on the streets. Brother. Oh, this is a profit thing. I well, no, I mean, it's that. not It's not even for profit. It is, um, to you know, it's like, a, bill? Yeah, it's like an evangelical, right? I'm spreading the good news. I, You know, I, I, I well, it, you know, we're recording this on Halloween. 
Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure if you want to be one of those kind of parents, but I think it'd be well appreciated if you're one of those type of parents. <laughs> I should be one um, of the assholes that slips and in candy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, interesting. How did this? Uh, I did not yeah. notice my son's Snicker bar was open, but uh, you know we're gonna. <laughs> Right, I always I, got a drug in it. I just I want to make sure everybody in my neighborhood listening understands that if your kids did bring drugs home in their candy, it was not from me. I'm not wasting my drugs on your stupid kids. Yeah, I I, I feel you. Yeah. Um my son does not get the good stuff. That, no, that, why, that, that, why would he? Candy or drugs? No, <laughs> just <laughs> candy corn and trash weed for that boy. That's right, and some you know like low end OTC stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, so let's get to the podcast. This week we're going to talk about name, image, and likeness in the new video game and what we like to see with it. But before we do that, friends, there's a couple of newsy type items that happened over, over the last uh, several days since we've discussed uh, this year's show together. And Dimitri, check out your screen. This is a headline from the the website's called PlayStation Lifestyle. Okay, uh, and and I know it's your Bible, right? You mm-hmm. go to it daily. It's bookmarked, and it's one of the first things you check. I get it. You know, you 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 have the alerts ha- happening in your inbox. But uh, if you did not happen to get this, uh, they reported uh, this that electric, Electronic Arts is going digital only in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Uh, now there is an update to this where Electronic Arts came back out and said we are not doing uh, oh. that. They are still going to do the physical copies. But the article also talked about, and this was not debunked by Electronic Arts' statement, they did say that they're still going to be doing the hard copies for now. But they didn't say for now, but they're still doing it as we, but the language was as if this is not a forever thing. Like, we're just, as of now, we're not going digital. Um, Debrecher, just want to get your thoughts on that, going completely digital, because we've talked about this, like, this, uh, this game, the the college football video game now, it's the NCAA football video game, I mean, I can't think of a whole lot of other games that I would want the physical copy of because of the box itself. Sure. I mean, and we've we've debated this on the show, right? Because I'm not as precious about the physical copy uh, as you are. I understand why people are. I would say that... It really has always been a matter of time since the PS3 and really more the PS4 made it possible to download uh, games because it's not like there is a price break on buying the digital copy versus the hard disk copy. That is just more profit for EA and and less expense. I I think everything is going this way. I mean, even to the extent like you can go into a target now right and still find plenty of dvds but you will not find as many in bulk in the back as you used to like even the companies that are still producing physical media are producing far less than they were 10 15 years ago because they are trying it's not just an option they are trying to train us to go towards the digital stuff because that is just more profit for them are you telling me it costs less to send you a digital code access link than it does to manufacture a disc, put a box around it with some nice yeah. uh, cellophane, uh-huh. and then ship it to a store for you to then go purchase. I, I believe There's also a digital so. copy link inside. Yes, <laughs> yes, I believe. I believe in the long run, it is uh, cheaper, and it's really weird. Like it makes giving gifts weird because my uh, my son is a big. Uh, switch player and and is migrating to ps5 and it's like all of his christmas presents are going to be like hey, here's here's a card go type in that code <laughs> as opposed to something open like you and i had as kids oh uh hey man uh i wrote this down on the back of a receipt <laughs> right so just uh do what you gotta do i guess <laughs> merry christmas that's right <laughs> uh okay well, one other thing i wanted you, to get to GA? that thought... <laughs> one other thing i wanted to get to which i thought was kind of yep. interesting over the weekend, the National Football League has some football games. Um, you know, if you're listening to this, and it's like July mm-hmm. of 2023, disregard. <laughs> yeah, just know that uh, that my my ring light went out. Uh, I, I was wondering what just happened there. My son pulled the cord sure. from <laughs> from the wall, but you guys are just gonna have to deal. Yep. Um. So, um, the NFL games happen somewhere in 2022 fall. Uh, and some winter games too. And uh, yes, thank you, son, for the cord that you just pulled out of the wall. It's by the way, it's what this looks like. It's the cord he gave me. Oh, which my, is... uh, my ring light just plugs right into my computer. Yeah, well, 
I have one like that too back here. I just got it as a gift, but I don't have it plugged into the computer yet. Mm, it's just, mm-hmm. I recently had a, uh, a a birthday kind of thing, so uh, that was one of the gifts. Regardless, let's get back to the topic. Sure. The NFL games um, were interesting. Uh, and I thought um, this this tweet that I saw from someone who uh, writes for uh, The Ringer, I think also does a podcast for The Ringer as well, uh, about um, a certain head coach uh, for the Green Bay Packers. Um Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Matt Mike Lafleur. Now, now, Mike Lafleur is, uh, I think, yeah, yeah, with the Packers, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my, yeah. Uh, so Kevin Clark uh, retweeted a tweet of him, solid, um, to where he talked about how everyone on the Jets has gotten better, but he loves Lafleur's growth from year one to year two. He said it was touch and go there for a while last year, but he's getting guys open and finding space, right? Um, and. He also said that LaFleur told him before the season how much ball he and his brother learned from playing NCAA football on PlayStation. And frankly, it shows elite football mind that can only be formed by playing decades of dynasty <laughs> mode in that game. By the way, Mike Matt LaFleur is the head coach of the Packers. Of the Packers I think Mike, LaFleur Mike is the, is the, the OC. Jets. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, just for clarity's sake, so you don't fucking tweet me about that. Oh, sorry, buddy. Uh, don't freaking tweet me. Uh, I forget the toddler in the room. Sure. Um, but uh, you, this is not something new to us. We know that like th- this game teaches us a lot of football. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that is excellent. Uh, certainly all the stuff that we have talked about people learning before, right? The culture of uh, the culture of other cultures, so to speak, right? But the playbook aspect of it, it, it's weird. Like, I think that I have always picked up on plays I want available to me, but I've never really played the game with the mind of an actual coach before and and thought about how plays, how schemes, how individual formations fit together to flow and create a game plan the way that I'm sure the LaFleur brothers did when they were playing this game. Uh, uh, Chris Benini was on this podcast uh, not that long ago and uh, for The Athletic and talked to us about how his piece mentioned (laughs) – that uh, who's the uh, Kansas State running back Vaughn Deuce Vaughn right Deuce is that right uh, Deuce Vaughn is the running back at Kansas State and how he learned about penalties and situational yep. football and stuff from the EA Sports uh, NCAA football video game so yeah let's get more of that uh, indeed like you spend so much time with it like you, you feel like you're gonna pick up something you know uh, whether it's you know what Palo Alto actually looks like. Or at least for a small <laughs> section of it, <laughs> or whether it's actually how to scheme up a, a, a decent enough offensive playbook. Okay, so National Football League aside, to the college game we go. The EA Sports College Football video game will come out when name, image, and likeness is definitely full throatedly a thing. And so this is something that EA has hinted that that's going to be um, integrated into the game but we don't quite know how yet because we don't know a lot about the new video game. But I'm interested from you, Dimitri, like if you were looking at the new game when it comes out next July, what seems to sort of make sense on something that is so fluid as it is right now? And yeah. and I don't think we've ever had a game, this game, I should say, deal with something that itself is in such the infancy stages of the creation that it could be just either a very skeletal, a skeletal, 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 I'll go with that. Like a very skeletonized version. Oh, I like that one better. Skeletonized version of what it could be. Or it could be a wide open, wild, wild west of playground for them to sort of create things with. I, I guess the only, I guess the only, uh, thing sort of along those lines would be if you go back to, the 90s versions of the game before we even had the BCS and we had the Bowl Alliance. Uh, Suddenly there were games that could not be the national championship game. Even once we got into the BCS, um, uh, the the BCS games like Dynasty Mode, you know, you weren't guaranteed that sort of uh, that sort of shitty replacement for the one good Pac-12 team that was going to be in the national championship game go into the Rose Bowl, right? So uh, that never really improved. So I guess that's as close to a one to what is we've ever gotten. I do think that this game is going to have to offer you two different versions of NIL because if the 
game wants to include it, if the makers want to include it, recognizing what a big part of college sports it is, there is going to have to be a version that you deal with in dynasty mode, and there's going to have to be a version you deal with in road to glory. Those are two very different sets of decisions uh, that have to be made as it relates to NIL deals. I think that is a great starting point for this because that is a very true. We, we, we already seem to know the dynasty mode as the bread and butter of the game. It has to exist. And Road to Glory is something that is going to be coming back for the new video game. So if you're going to be incorporating name, image, and likeness, we're going to want to see it both ways. Like right. We're going to want to see what it's like to create a player and then sort of go through those steps and then be – tantalized uh by potential uh you know uh name image like this deals that you're not allowed to get until you're on campus right you right gotta so be, <laughs> what is gotta interesting promise that what is interesting is i talked to a friend who is a beat reporter for one of the acc teams up here and he was sort of talking to somebody uh that is no longer in coaching but was when nil first came around and he was sort of talking to him about That's such a short window. Like it's just a I know, I know. Like basically, he it's like a thirty-five minute year, window. Is the, the easiest way to say it. Uh, you know, he said that he was as as much as the narrative is that a coach has to keep harmony in the locker room with these nil deals. Really, what he saw play out was. Most guys were really happy when somebody, when one of their teammates secured a big NIL deal. The only time that there was some advice about how you how you should tread here is if a big time freshman who wasn't even a starter got almost anything. Um, that that was sort of the only real um, dicey situation I, I think he dealt with, and that's one of those things that. You know, as you do road to glory, if you build yourself up to be a five star recruit, especially as a quarterback, and you come in with that endorsement for the local, you know, whatever car dealership, barbershop, whatever the case may be, I do think it would be a fun part of the game to figure out how you play this, right? Like this coach um, told my buddy that he, it did not dawn on him until this year when he heard the story about what Bryce Young did for all of his offensive linemen that, yeah, I think in hindsight, I would definitely uh, encourage quarterbacks that get big NIL deals to make sure the guys around you understand how that came to be. Like that's going to be a big part of building team chemistry as we go forward. So that's the sort of thing that if you are in that dynasty mode version of the game, playing as the coach that you have to make this decision. Like I, I, I think there are, it's interesting. There are so many br different ways this thing can branch off, but it really starts with there are two paths you follow. Are you the guy getting the money or are you the guy that has to create harmony amongst all these guys who now have the money? Yeah. Well, let's start with the road to glory mode. Let's start with the, the guy getting the money. Uh, yeah. So uh, you go through road to glory. And by the way, if you run through all your exercises in your season and you're anything less than a four star, what were you doing the whole time? Like, I don't. <laughs> I mean, let's say make it, I'm all for making it harder. Like I've always said, like I want this thing to have an ability to in a level where it's just a pain in the butt to yeah. be good at. Like I really like that aspect, right? So if you can find a level like that and then be five star, then you should freaking buy Twitter and right. own it. Like, well, right, I mean, man, so you... this is this is the other thing, right? Like if you are introducing it, I L. Um, it shouldn't just be your stars go. You should know where you stand on whatever they're going to use the NI or the uh, ESPN 300 or the uh, 24 seven uh, rankings. Like there should be some sort of uh, reward for becoming the number one, or maybe even just a top five overall recruit. Mm, yeah. Like, like an extra biscuit at the, at the local, uh, yeah. The, the local tavern. Okay. Um, <laughs> sure tavern biscuits <laughs> that's a that's a big place for biscuits right yeah, like yeah taverns often go with like peanuts brews and biscuits and, and biscuits sure yeah that's right <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um yeah, yeah that that's what's interesting to me because like i, lo I love the realism of it I, I like the nil but like to me my brain has always been and i know there are a lot of people that don't feel this way my brain has always been sort of felt like when you when you look at either when you start to introduce quote these monetary figures right or these inducements that you're not allowed to do until you get on campus right 
Um, it do, it it doesn't ring true, right? Like it doesn't feel like you know if I if I went and say and took uh, and said like, hey, I'm going to get two and a half million over four years in Tuscaloosa versus getting one million over four years in like Ames, right? So mm-hmm. like to me, it doesn't feel like it means anything to me to choose one or the other because again. It's very video gamey. Sure. Right. Like, unless you're building a franchise and you have to standard caps and budgets, then I think that then he gets into a little more of a, a figuring out stage. But if, like, you're just going to introduce, hey, here's the highest dollar, then, you know, you go to either the place you want to go because it doesn't matter as far as the money, or you just go to the place that's got the most money because it's a place you want to go anyway. Right. So, like, I feel like if you want to do it that way to make it feel a little more like consequential to choose one over the other, then once you get to said place, maybe like you say, if you get to that two and a half million to a Tuscaloosa, it's your job then to um, you know not have offensive linemen just fall down on the ground in the middle of the game <laughs> so you get sacked or something. <laughs> like, I, and I'm not sure how you sort of how how you you know, how you navigate that to sort of make it feel more real for like, yeah, just I, getting the money as a player. I, I think the dollar amounts uh, almost don't matter. And this is more the thing that I've kind of been pushing for all along is some version of story mode, right? Like the more benevolent you are with your, um, with your NIL money, does that then boost, you know, let's say you're the quarterback. Does that then boost, um, your offensive lines clutch block ratings. Duh, if you're a wide mm. receiver, does that then boost uh, a say a chemistry rating between you and the quarterback? Like, are, are there are there things that you can tie to nil that are not about how much did you get, but what you the choices you made and how they actually impact things on the field. Mm, yeah. And, and maybe you deduct some of uh, some of that chemistry or even the money for like drops. You're like, OK, yeah. you dropped it. So I'll give you 50 bucks. Stop dropping it. You know, or, <laughs> or whatever. I, I can mean, sort of see that like but I, I do. I do like the idea of um, uh, of having to sort of manage this in-game economy. Right. Like I, I do yeah. think that that is kind of a fun element to it in in all I guess it, to be more realistic, I, I would say um, that, you know, I, I think that whether it is how you dole out money or take care of teammates or um, the type of endorsements that you choose, it, as if it affects how good your player is or where a ceiling on a particular rating is, um, based on the choices you make, I think if there is some sort of puzzle element to NIL in Road to Glory, it makes it more fun than just click, sure, of course I'll drink di- uh, Gatorade for $100,000 this week. <laughs> I do like maybe the idea is that you you allocate some of those uh, points or fun. First of all, I think the more points you're able to, the higher amount of NIL you're able to capture or something, I think a lot of this will be user achievement unlocked. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you get the, you know, your Xbox points or your PlayStation points or yeah. whatever. Like that's, that's the thing. But maybe if you're charitable with your money, not just with charities, um, or maybe if you do team up with charities um, in the game itself, or if you give away money to, let's say, a scholarship fund. Yeah. You know, uh, or as you say, you take out your lineman to eat. Maybe that week your lineman rating so you can't get sacked. You yeah. Know, like I, for that, I next, mean, that next upcoming game, like like for like a one game boost for using these sort of points. So it turns into like a, like you had to use recruiting points, right? You're, you only have so many points and maybe like once you deduct some of those points, like you still have the same amount of points you started with, but you use some of those points. And so against, uh, you know, Georgia, you can't get sacked. So I, I'm going to throw out a couple of different ideas to you that I think, could be like they would only work in road to glory mode. They would not, you know, they wouldn't have the same effect in uh, in um, dynasty mode. But what if every time you are presented with an NIL opportunity, you are presented with two? And let's say, you know, one of them is for uh, a local. Um, oh, let's go back to the barbershop idea. OK, so one of them is for a barbershop. The other one is for a fast food restaurant. And depending on which one you choose, 
different things, different attributes will be affected. So if you go with the barber shop, well, hey, man, you look good. And what's the old uh, saying? Look good, feel good, feel good, play good, right? So maybe your confidence level goes up. You play good, you bang good, right? There you go. There you go. Bring Uh, your girlfriends back. (laughs) <laughs> so maybe you would be maybe there are ways they could induce you or or incentivize making i don't know the wrong choice but uh i i do like the idea of given being given options for what sort of path you want to take i do kind of like the idea that <laughs> in a given week you could have chosen between let's say an australian themed restaurant yep or a restaurant around uh, a certain type of uh, bovine. Uh-huh. Uh, and <laughs> that week happens to be the bad one. That's the bad <laughs> choice to make. Like, you still get the money, but maybe you played like crap the next week. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're like, well, listen, you wanted to RG. give everybody, like, gift cards to this place that is known for diarrhea. Let's say you were to choose the endorsement for um, a steakhouse that focuses – on cattle with particularly long spikes coming out of their heads. And that happens to be the week you're playing Texas. Like, I, I don't know how that would, what is, what is the payoff there? I don't know how that would, the, the cattle, you talk about the Jurassic park. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. I don't know how to do with Texas, but uh, you know, I get it. I, I, get, I got the picture you're painting sort of, I mean, <laughs> if you could get that, that company obviously or you can just create a fake company right like like right. no one owns like big land. cow steakhouse <laughs> right exactly. no one owns i think the intellectual property of uh cattle gear right, right. like so um yeah there could be that uh i'd be 100 percent down with that all right um, let me give you the it other would be one. interesting like that would be the week that it'd be suspicious though that you would get that steakhouse offer that week and you'd be like oh why this week yeah <laughs> I, I don't know. You don't think if you week? if you chose it that week, like that'd be a real fire up the team kind of or oh, Arky, here you go. So if you choose the endorsement, then the story plays out. Like you can't decide, like, oh, you know, I want the money, but I won't do the Instagram post, or I want the money, but I won't do the TV commercial or whatever. Perhaps you go with Big Cow Steakhouse for their endorsement that week. And your um, you know, what you have to do is an Instagram post that has you flashing the horns down in front of a cooler full of uh, prime cut steaks. And then that ups <laughs> the pass rushers aggressiveness level on the uh, other side. Man, I, listen, electronic arts, if you are listening and we have reason to believe you are, mm-hmm. um, because this is the greatest uh, unofficial EA Just sports college football game for, podcast. for the listeners that are not uh, part of EA sports. <laughs> And you're um, hearing a bovine in the so, yeah. someone needs to shoot this animal that's behind me. <laughs> <laughs> For the people that are not part of EA Sports, like that is not a joke. We do have reason to believe that there are listing parties uh at uh Tiburon headquarters or what used to be Tiburon headquarters. Uh in uh, magnificently decorated great state of Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um okay, okay, so let so let me give you the other one. The other like, oh, sorry, yeah. choice to make idea. What would you think, and, and look, EA, you're not in business with the NCAA anymore. We don't have to pretend anymore. We can be very honest about this stuff. <laughs> what if you were offered NIL deals that were not vetted through compliance? What if you were presented opportunities that was like, you know, hey, Jeff of Jeff's Cadillacs wants to give you a new car, um, you know, to to endorse his dealership we cannot uh you know the, he or i don't know either he has not gone through compliance or we can't find evidence that he's talked to compliance and this deal is on the up and up and so you can take whatever the inducement is but there's always that possibility of a ticking tie bob by the way you just sprouted a second hit <laughs> <laughs> i just saw in the background probably gonna have to blur that later but he is he is going through some kind of transcendental chanting phase <laughs> wait why do you have to blur it is he on the land <laughs> he is on the land he's wanted in two states uh so uh, this being one of them by the way so, okay all right yeah well, everyone uh, be cool yeah you, you hide him in plain sight is what you're looking for <laughs> um you know i think that goes back to the possibility of 
<laughs> of reintroducing a probation mode, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think if we're if we want to couple the ideas together, uh, my 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 monk son behind me. Is, is <laughs> I mean, look like look face. at what's going I on. I think we're okay. I think I'm okay with that. Look at what's going on right now. Uh, IRL, as the kids say, at Tennessee. Like the cheating has to be so blatant and so like your dick on the table daring the ncaa to come do something about it like i would like to see that enter the video game i i, I think if you're definitely if you if you've committed to not being within the ncaa right yeah. uh and not partnering with them again for the next game which it seems like that they that would be a long shot to, to rekindle that relationship at this <laughs> right. point. then whatever you can do in the video game can be a thousand times better than what the old probation sort of mode kind of Agreed. was. Which means we can then reintroduce shady things like this. <laughs> and we can reintroduce because again, it's all made up. Every team yeah. is going to go on probation at some on somebody's console somewhere, like at some point throughout the next you know 365 days till the next game comes out. Then someone else is gonna go, everyone else is gonna go on probation again. I think absolutely if we're if we're we're interested in bringing back the probation mode too. Then absolutely, this nil is ripe for cheating and ripe for the shady characters to yeah. show up. Ripe for somebody literally to walk up to you after a game and say, "Nice touchdown! Here's a hundred bucks." Yeah, exactly. I I want a little digital mattress Mac in this game. <laughs> That's that. <laughs> uh, we should call him something. Uh, something mattress Max. Like Oh, oh, sorry. I was going to say like Rockstar Rick or Rock Chair Rick or something. Yeah. <laughs> Rocky Chair Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Made his fortune in Wicker. But they did. <laughs> and you don't think those Wicker Rocket Chairs are going to be nearly as comfortable as they are, but that's why he makes so much money. Exactly. exactly. Nobody accounts for the rattan. Okay. So this, I think, blends nicely into our dynasty mode version of this conversation, uh, which is exactly what we look forward to with longer term ramifications from just just the player itself from whatever organization will be overseeing the rules or if we'll even have an organization of yeah. rules and we'll just say listen cheating's not a thing nothing's a thing but if you're going to have NIL and it sounds like they want to have NIL in the game then I do think this has to be sort of a you know um a thing right like to be able to have an overarching sort of hey you know, you're allowed to have four hundred million dollars, but not four hundred and fifty million dollars. You know, because the NCAA is clearly like they're trying to figure this out with Congress, right? Right. So it's also a very fluid thing. They know they want to get their hands around it, so there has to be some kind of carburetor put on this at some point. Do you want that immediately with the next game before they can figure this out? No, I mean I okay. want the game to be as realistic to uh, oh, okay. the football we know. Uh, that is that is coming. Like I said earlier, I, I think you've got to, in order for NIL to make sense in the dynasty mode, um, I think you've got to adopt some sort of story element to dynasty mode. It's the only way that a coach really has any sort of, uh, feels any kind of ramifications, I guess I would say, yeah. uh, from NIL deals being done with members of his team. And I think also like, you know, I know how how frequently you've played like um, in, in like NBA games, for mm -hmm. example, right? Uh, like there's a like like so college football. You know, I'm currently playing it for the like it's week to week, right? And like you technically could go back out and do some practice kind of thing, yeah. But like there isn't a hey, you're supposed to this day is set up to do a practice. Do you want to practice or sim right. or skip it or whatever? Like I feel like if you add that nil element, then it's like hey, you know, Tuesday, you know. Kevin Brown needs to go record a commercial, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, you know, for this uh, for the local uh, taco place, you know, right? Even though you yeah. think some of this would happen in the off season, you don't want it to in the game. You you, you, you want it in the game. It's more interesting if it's happening during the week itself. There's also, I think, a a fun thing here that could like this. I think reflects um, just what big business modern college football is is you know if you get to a certain point uh, of success or you know you go to one of those six-star programs like I think one thing that would make a lot of sense for this game beyond just NIL is one-star programs have the lowest operating budgets two-star programs are a little bit more and so on and so forth and those six-star programs 
have the highest operating budgets. I do think that it would make a lot of sense to be able to somehow control those operating budgets, right? And at some point, can you go out and get an NIL coordinator that makes navigating this whole process a little bit easier? Or um, if so, so we all typically want to. We all, I should say, a lot of us in the dynasty mode want to start with like one of the lowest ranked teams, yeah, of course, and then move up. So maybe the more success you have at a lower place, the more your nil ability sort of pops up. The more your budget there, wherever you currently are at, pops up, and maybe there's a percentage of that that carries over to the next place you go, or you just start at the baseline of the place you go. Especially, well, I, I mean, it's. But I was just real quick. It's very similar to what we see in real life, right? Like Billy Napier going to Florida, there was excitement about. He had a long track record of success. We knew kind of what Billy Napier coming to Florida would mean. Um, And and just, you know, crossing over into sports talk for a second, like will mean, give it time. He told you from the get go, this was going to take a while. Uh, But, you know, I I think that makes sense. What you would say when you're about to lose a crap ton of games. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you know, look at how Dan Mullen did on the recruited trip. Uh, I, I think that it is it is very in keeping with the if it's in the game, it's in the game mentality of EA that, you know, even if you are, hell, go back to 2004 with Florida, right? Like they bring in Urban Meyer. Everybody knew what the expectation was with Urban Meyer. It didn't matter that he hadn't been a, a power five coach before. I, I think your idea makes a lot of sense. You bring in or a school brings in a coach like that, the expectations should be raised and thus the, uh, the toy budget, so to speak, should be raised as well. Mm, the toy budget. Indeed. It's a, uh, it's, it's a uh, Christmas on the plains. I see. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, it's anything but Christmas on the plains right now. Uh, again, very dating this podcast, but uh, you know, everybody be cool. Everybody, everybody be cool. be cool. Everybody handle everything normally, just like they do, uh, down, down <laughs> over. Um, Can, do you think, by the way, and I'm going to find a reason that this would make sense. Could we get the yellow fella on the podcast? I don't know. <laughs> right? Like, I don't even know who you would go through at this point. Yeah. Because I, I like, I feel like I would want to just to be kind of swarmy and kind of a jerk to go through Auburn's athletic department. <laughs> and ask... <laughs> just like, hey, listen. Forget going probably... through Auburn's athletic department. Call call Alan Green directly. <laughs> hey, clearly hey, he's, he's got your number. <laughs> he, he's got your he's got your number, and apparently uh, he is ninety five percent of your voicemails. So, right. <laughs> um, would you would you mind just tossing that over here? Yeah, uh, I don't think it's impossible. I don't think it's likely, but I I don't, I don't think I think it's slightly less. I think it's slightly less than a hail mary, but it's definitely okay. a deep passing round. How many people? How many people could we get on the podcast, or at least get them to take us seriously, just by mentioning that Paul Feinbaum has been on the show? We start with Yellow Fella. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, did Bear Bryant make up Brian Bank? Uh, well, yeah, that's what his uh, that's what his son did. That's it. What's the joke? I mean, did Bear Bryant? Oh, I see. Create a bank to maybe launder some money. I don't know. Mm, mm-hmm, listen, mm-hmm. that's a long play theory that we'll do on another podcast. Probably not even this one. We'll create another podcast called Conspiracy Theories of the Bear. Uh, so, okay, what? but I was going to add on to that that last moment about the coaches, which is why, okay, so I think if you're a lower tier school, um, there should be some type of integration of how to be able to be creative, so on and so, so, okay. so forth, with your NIL, whether you're afforded different opportunities uh, to whether it's, we're not going up yet, buddy. We're, we're whether it's uh, <laughs> you're afforded uh, different chances. Uh, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What am I doing? I'm recording a podcast, buddy. Don't you remember we've been here the whole time. Okay. Okay. You want to talk to Mr. Dimitri? Hi. Right. Uh, he's going to be blocked out by this. That's Howdy, cool. pal. Howdy, pal. All right. We're going to do some of this podcast uh, with a baby in the bottom. Okay. So um, <laughs> this is not going to be great. Uh, luckily, we only have like five or eight more minutes left in the show. Oh, good. Uh, me just guessing. Um, so you, you you integrate more options that you have um, to be creative as opposed to just flushing money down the toilet at every single player that you have. Right. Maybe you're given an opportunity to like choose 
more types of sponsorships that you can give to players. Yeah. Uh, maybe, well, I mean, you know, maybe you, the numbers, not the thing. Maybe the way to do it is like to do more social media type things. You're able to kind of integrate that way. So let you me know. throw a, an idea out to you that we are let seeing me mute. in real life <laughs> that we're seeing in real life. I mean, look at the story out of Texas tech where a booster put together the, uh, the, um, collective to make sure every player got a $25,000 <laughs> every player got a $25,000 a year um salary basically like as you go up in stature both you as a coach and as you raise your program is that the kind of thing that you could go pursuing because you know as you go up as a coach you would think raising the level of your school or of your current program. And we've seen in NCAA football in the past, like, you know, North Texas can end up in a national championship game. Who are you to say boo? Um, yeah. Who are you to say North Texas can't find their way in there? Come on. That's right. I mean, like what we've seen in the past is that those, uh, those schools can do that in the game. And if they are doing that in this universe, shouldn't those programs be making every effort possible to make it so that you don't see any sort of disadvantage to stay in there. I think it's fair. Yeah. I think what's also possible fair, and you brought this up before on the podcast, which is why I think it's a good place to uh, sort of end on, which is one of your ideas. You have to be able to, and maybe it's with the name, image, and likeness uh, coach or coordinator that you yeah. figure out. I think it is imperative Um that my son not destroy the house. I think it's also <laughs> imperative, which is not your idea. I think it's imperative that you're able to get some kind of access now and build an ability now to recruit and to hire your coordinators. Yes, absolutely. And so if you can hire your coaches, you can go through like the NBA 2K game. Like you can hire a general manager. What the heck's a general manager actually do? Like running right. the game, but you can go hire them. And you can go hire your coaches. You can go figure out, are you playing offense most of the time? Yes. Are you playing defense <laughs> some, all, all the time? Sometimes. Right. But, like, those coaches mean something. And, like, a co recruiting coordinator would mean something. Or a NIL coordinator would mean something. Uh, you if know, you're this able to is, hire them as, as opposed to just having them assigned to you. Th this is one of those things where, again, I keep coming back to there has to be a story element of Dynasty Mode in this next game because – I love the idea of being able to choose your coach and coordinator. And I would like to see the mood kind of reflected in the fan base, right? Like how do they feel about you going out and hiring the, uh, the, the disgraced recently fired coach of rice to be your defensive coordinator versus you hired the hot up and coming coordinator that has made rice's defense. A, a can't stop machine uh, to be your coordinator. <laughs> right. And I think you should be as a coach, Forced to look at those tweets and yes. those messages. Like, <laughs> Listen, you should be forced the, to look at it and be like, wow, okay. <laughs> the number one thing I want this video game to steal from the 2K franchise is the Twitter feed. Yeah. That's, I I wouldn't hate that, honestly, to be with, to yeah. be with the game. Like, I think there's a lot why 2K gets right. And I think EA can, you know, steal, steal, borrow, borrow, sure. reimagine, so to speak, like uh, your, your best friend Walt Disney likes to say. Mm hmm. I mean, not anymore. He doesn't. Well, really yeah, say, he's dead. He, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks. Now he says know. brains. <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. But I think that's going to do it for us. I think this name, image, and likeness is a <laughs> wide open field. He saw our cat. He's running after. Yeah, uh, I've seen I, your cat. It's a good looking cat. <laughs> it's a big, fat, ugly. <laughs> No, it has not liked us in two years. I disagree. Big uh, babies and cats should always be big and fat. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to fatten this baby up then because <laughs> we've done the cat right. By yeah, you. good. Uh, but th there is a wide open uh field to play in with name, image, and likeness in this game, and I'm really excited to see what they come up with. As long as it's not a super basic and super like not wanting to tell uh, to, to skirt the edge one way or the other. Are you already back? Uh, then I think it's, I think there's a chance where this could be a lot of fun to play around with. It's, it's like you look, we lost the game before the playoff came into uh, existence, but this is on the level of the playoff of like, this is the game changer uh, of the way we experience NCAA football as a franchise. 
All right, that's going to do it for us. Uh, Jay, uh, Jaden, would you like to? That's my son. Would you like to say goodbye to the good people? Say, can you say bye bye to Mr. Dimitri and bye bye to those listening? Bye bye. Bye bye. What do we say, Dimitri, to the good people on the way out on your end? Uh, we say save and sim to next week, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>